Hey, Darren and Harley with Confident Home Solutions, licensed general contractor, builder, remodeler in North Carolina. And what are we talking about? Uh, how to remove nails, screws out of multiple different materials. And staples. And staples. So I, I got thinking about this. Um, different people show how to remove different nails. Uh, but we're going to show you a little bit different method as far as uh, finish work. Since we're primarily remodelers, we're going to get right into the nitty gritty of what we commonly see. Uh, three things that we see is um, removing a damaged nail. Um, actually, I would say four. Um, staples, we remove a lot of staples. Uh, we remove screws, whether it's going into drywall or um, a screw that was put into plywood that's stripped and it won't come back out. And of course, uh, finish nails. Nails on the back of casing and, and all that. So we're going to give you a few demonstrations in here of uh, some tools and how we remove it and we'll go from there. Sound good? Yep. Okay. String. So, you know, let me, let's go over to these um, tools. I'm going to come right up here. So here's a cat paw. Actually, that's a really nice cat paw. A stiletto. Um, we use that quite a bit, but mainly for nails. Of course, a Vaughn uh, Wonder Bar, excellent uh, Martinez hammer, but I'm going to show you guys two tools that we use a lot of, and you're looking at them right there. A utility knife and um, some Ni Nipex uh, diagonal cutters. Now, the brand really doesn't matter, but what we're going to show you is with it between this razor in this Nipex, you're going to get really good results as far as removing staples. Alright, so you just saw us throw a couple staples in here. I got this razor here. Now, a lot of people are going to freak out about it. So, since we go through a ton of razors, and you, you have two good sides. You know, you could keep your good side right there. If you're worried about cutting into something that's um, uh, sensitive or, uh, you know, you're really trying to protect it, Doll that thing down. What that'll do, or if you got a brick or a piece of concrete, that way you're not worried about cutting yourself. So all I need to do, oh, this, this guy's in here. All I gotta do is get in on the one side of it. See that? Now, you can see I've done virtually no damage to this piece of wood yet. I'm going to come in here with my knife X. And I don't want to push too hard. I'm just pushing hard enough just to grab it. Now, it's important. You're seeing, see this, how it's rounded on the back edge? You see me pull, I pulled it backwards. Now, if I would have went in there with a screwdriver, I would have had a big dig mark out from underneath of it. Most time, these staples aren't in here this hard. Now, you can, you can take these out, the entire thing out that way, with, um, I may have to come in here like this. That side's out. Let me grab this side. Slowly, I mean uh, softly, uh, squeeze it and just pull it out. One more. That is a tough piece of pine. Oh, I snipped it off. Got a little energetic there. No problem. So we got those three out. I do that a lot. Now Harley typically, if this is not a finished piece of um, uh, wood or what have you, 
uh, you know, it's not that big deal. So you can just go in there with a straight screwdriver, jam it in there, pry it up a little bit to where you can get your cutters underneath of it. But if it's something finished, my recommendation is either take a piece of sandpaper, knock that edge off to where you can work your way under a staple. Okay, so what we got here is we have a galvanized, what is this, a six? Yeah, so that's a two inch galvanized 6D finish nail. So I just grabbed this off the shelf, but anything galvanized, galvanized is always going to nail in harder and it's going to pull out harder just because of that galvanized grabbing on, on the wood surface itself. I want to show you the difference, how we would typically do it. Here's a good scenario here. Let's say this is your door frame and your casing is coming over and nailing onto here. Now actually these would actually be closer and these most likely would be 4Ds instead of 6s, but it is what it is. Um, we're gonna do, for demonstration purposes, we're gonna use the cat paw. Now you ask, why would this matter? Well, let's say you're reusing this frame. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not sure if it's going to make an impression or not. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can see right there. Coming from the side. No, right here. I don't know if it really shows. There's a big dip right there. Yeah, I can see some. Yeah. So that's the problem. Now one thing you could do is like di disperse the um the weight of it of course you see we use razor blades all the time for stuff let me come in here like this disperse some of it right there wow look at what is <laughs> i broke my <laughs> razor blade there no big deal well i don't have no indent or you could use the nipex Come in here like so. And the problem with that is it may leave a little wind down too. Now you're gonna you're gonna have to squeeze right down on this. I don't think it's going to. There's a little one back there. Just from rocking back so far most of the time what what I end up doing is a combination of this with a putty knife I actually have a putty knife that's a little bit rougher and I will put the it, it's a little bit thicker metal I will put the putty knife underneath this that way as I'm rolling it even though it's uh, rounded right there it won't leave any impression this is far, far better than the indention of the back side of this. Now, I will say one thing. and Very seldom, and I think Harley will attest to this. Uh, d don't you see, when I'm pulling nails out, and I'm not talking about framing nails. This is what you normally see me pulling nails out with mm -hmm. right here, aren't you? Uh, between this, a pair of lineman pliers, and this. Uh, I mean, yeah, I love the cat paws, but this is what I do most of my work with as far as pulling nails up. Well, let me give you another scenario. This is really common here. Uh, let's say you have a board right there that when you pull off, and this is mainly, um, I'll say, with 8 finish and smaller. However, we've done it up to 10 and 12 Actually, we've done it all the way up to 16D. Let me put it this way. Anytime you have a finish head, this is a good alternative. A finish head meaning that it has a small head to where it's not leave it, to where it's meant to be recessed uh, below the surface of the, um, the one by or your, tr your trim board. All right, so this is very typical uh, setting to where here to where you pull, pull the board off, you have a nail sticking out. You know, 
the first the first thing a person's going to think of is I need to go ahead and knock it through. Now, if you're tr planning on resaving this board, you may want to rethink that because you possibly may do a lot more damage to this board as opposed to doing it this way. So if we were trying to resave this, I don't care about that small hole. What I'd hate to do is drive this nail backwards and to bust a whole bunch of area out. And trust me, it happens all the time. So what I would do, I would grab this, grab my knife picks again, or any uh, side cutters or lineman pliers, and I would just pull it through. There you go. And all you're left with is that small finished hole there. Now, here's another thing. If it's already been caulked and painted, and you pulled that board off, and you can't even see the nail head, what you will be left with is nothing there. It will look finished as if nothing ever happened, and you'll just have the, um, the nail hole in the back, but you don't care about that. So just, just to say again, and I'm gonna see if I can get one to do it. Let's put one in and see if we can get some tear out. Because sometimes it happens really bad. Yeah, I need a nail set. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go out and get one. I, I, I'm not guaranteed that this will tear out. There we go. Yep. See the tear out? Let me pause. It. Show them. There you go. Not too far. You see that tear out? I had nothing with this one. Mm -hmm. So you're fur you're further off. Um, pulling it through on the back side so that's how a pro does it as opposed to a, um, a DIY or something like that okay so a lot of times people think of with their claw hammer that they come in and they always the only way, only opportunity that they have is to come in here and pull it out this way. Now you definitely can. But there's a lot more, quite a few more options. Now this is a slick hammer. There's not too many people swinging 300, uh, 300 plus dollar hammers. So I'm not going to show you those options. But most of them have claws. Actually all of them should. And you come in here and roll it to the side. The next one, you loosen it, roll it to the side. There you go, that's, that's another option. What you would do with that is if you have a really large nail, and some, some large nails have so much uh, holding force that you really can't leverage over. That would be the first reason. Another reason is, is if the head is so destroyed that you can't get it, um, you can't get it to hold this way. You can sh shove it in there hard and get it to bite, and then roll it out. So that's a pretty good um, way to deal with that. Am I missing anything with nails? That's all I can think of. You know, there's a lot more that uh, I'm probably forgetting that we we just do um, by second nature, um, but. I think that covers the nails. I think we need to get over the screws. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Okay, so this is actually a Joyce hanger nail. Uh, I just grabbed it. Just what I, I didn't want to use a full 16. Okay, you want to do this? I'll let you do it. All right. So the whole purpose of this right here, put it right over top. And what this is going to allow me to do, and I forget that this is normally on here. So as opposed to coming in here, let me redo it. This board's not hooked down, so I'm going to have to hold up. 
Typically, when you're using a cat paw, you don't want to do it right at the edge. A lot of times, people, a lot of times, people think they're going to go in there. No, you actually got to, you got to actually bring it here. Yeah. But you're going to have to bring it back a little bit. And as you're hitting it, start rolling it up. So yeah. look at look at the difference between that and that. Get a lot more tear out with this. But one. if you don't start that far back, um, that's going to happen. That that was actually pretty impressive. Let me show that one more time because I this is now, not this, this is not this an is, option that we use that much. It's not. This is more for uh, a rough framing. You you probably still wouldn't use this scenario in finished reference, but. Um, huh. <laughs> wow, what a difference between that and that. Look how much cleaner these are than how much big a chunk it is. Yeah. So this is pretty common to happen in drywall, whether you missed a stud or you're hanging a picture or something like that. So this can be done with power drill or a screwdriver. Most of the time this is going to be Phillips or Torx. So just take your razor blade, put it toward the under the shoulder of the screw and kind of work it like a um, like a wedge perfect so okay so harley's gonna show actually uh like some of the worst i mean this is uh this can be extremely frustrating show them that screw so there's a lot of screws they they didn't run these very much but this is inch and five eighths and i think this is they're, they're both inch and five eighths. Show, show them the screw your fingers hold on there there's um no threaded portion mm -hmm. on this right here yeah so when you hold this up here you can see sorry about that you can see that that when that screws all the way through that plywood that <laughs> there's not going to be any threads to help reverse it back out. Yeah. So, so ahead, punch her through. Just run it down. See, it's already spinning right there. Make sure it's good and stripped out. <laughs> okay, so... Right. Yeah, see yeah. it's not wanting to come okay. out. So he has actually two options here. He can use the razor or a All he did was push down the back side of that with the razor able to get it out or I can do it with a cat paw. You can use it with a cat paw or you can use these right here. This is typically what I would use here. You just do a light little bit of pressure and what's cool about this, look at this, as you squeeze this mm -hmm. it actually pushes, uh, it, pushes out. it out. Okay there is one Worst scenario and that right now this is sticking this is sticking out. Let's say that that was counter from back in Okay, so at this point he he is limited to the razor as you can see there's no threads on the back side Not even close. So yeah, the razor would be the only option Look at that Look at that sickness. All right, did we give away too many tips, too many secrets? Yeah, we did. Uh-oh. Too much on the baggage claim. Uh, okay. So, yeah, we covered um, the staples, the finish nails, some screws. Yeah, it's it's not everything. You know, we, we take all these things as uh, granted because we just do it all the time. And I, I know there's probably things that we haven't showed you, but I think we showed them quite a bit. Yeah. All right. Well, this is Harley, Darren, Confident Home Solutions, and we are out. We'll bring you along on sometime when we're actually on the job doing this. So, yeah. all right, see ya.